Hello, my name is Ewan. I am the Stream Machine Technician for Gamma Sports, and today I am doing a second video in a series on uh, machine tune-ups and um, maintenance tips. So what I'm going to be doing today for everybody is doing an in-depth um, spring tensioner calibration tutorial with some additional tips and tricks for getting your tensioner uh, properly calibrated. So um, I guess I'll start off by it's kind of showing what tools you may need for doing this. So um, I have four hex wrenches here. You won't necessarily need all of these, um, but these are all the ones that you might need. So um, if you get the hex wrench set with your Gamma machine, this is going to be the smallest in that set. Um, and then we have three other sizes here as well. I, I don't remember specifically what sizes they are, these are, but um, you will probably be needing at least two or three of these anytime that you need to calibrate your machine. I also have two 10 millimeter wrenches here um, and I'll get to why I have these out here in a little bit. Um, but to start I guess I'll just get into some of the basics. So um, as many of you who probably own one of these may know the calibration on these spring tensioners is done primarily on this little brake lever latch block right here. And the first thing that you do is you loosen this set screw so that you can adjust the main calibration screw here on the other side. So what I've done here now is I've purposely, I guess, uncalibrated this tensioner um, so that I can do a, a nice little rundown for everybody. So uh, the first thing that you want to do is go ahead and set your tensioner to 30 pounds. So you do it at a low and a high setting. So I always start on the low. So there's 30 pounds and I have my tension calibrator ready. So I'm going to go ahead and pull and see what I get. All right, so I got, let's see, that's just about 32 pounds. So before I go through and adjust anything, I'm going to set my tensioner to 60, and then I'm going to see what I get up at 60 pounds. Alright, so there's 60. Let me pull this back. Alright, and I got 60 and a half pounds. So right off the bat, I can tell that I need to make an adjustment that's not always necessary, but is necessary in this case. And that's where these wrenches will come in handy. Okay, so I've already tested my tension at low and high settings. So I was pulling high by two and a half pounds when I tried it at 30, and I was only pulling high by a half pound when I tried it in 60. So what that means is that the tensioner isn't pulling tension linearly. So I have to come down here and make an adjustment with these couple uh, on this slider right here that connects to this bar. So that's where these wrenches come in handy. So the first thing I'll do is I'll loosen this up so that I can make an adjustment. Now, I'm not aiming this there's a couple things that you need to think about here. When you make an adjustment here, it's really only going to affect the tension up at the high setting, around 60 pounds. It's not going to have a huge effect at the low setting if I'm testing at 30 pounds. So my goal is to try to match my tension at 60 pounds so that it's the same as what I'm getting when I'm pulling at 32 pounds. So if I'm pulling at 32 and a half like I am on this tensioner, and 60 and a half at high, I'm trying to get with this adjustment to be pulling at 62 and a half while I'm set at 60 so that the tension becomes linear. And at that point, I can go in back and worry about calibrating it properly. So when my tension is low, like I have it here, I'm going to take this and I'm going to try to move it down a little bit. You don't need to do a whole lot. I moved it down a little bit. And then I'm still set at 60 pounds here, so I'm going to go back and see what I get this time when I pull at 60. So that time, I'm a little bit above 62 and a half now, so I need to go back and make another adjustment. OK. 
Okay, gonna slide this down a little bit more. Alright, getting closer, and now we're pulling at 61 and a half. As you can see, this is just an incremental adjustment, moving it a little bit and then seeing where I'm ending up. All right, so now I overshot it. I moved it too much. So now I'm pulling it 63 and a half. So I have to go back up again to lower that tension. Just going to try to move it a little bit. Let's see how I did. All right. And I went back down too low again. So these can be a little fidgety. You see I'm kind of yo-yoing back and forth over the tension I want to be. So this can take a little bit of time to get it right where you need it. Um, but just, you know, persevere you'll get there. Uh, it can be a little frustrating, but you just have to keep trying. So I've gotten my tension to pull linearly. So I'm pulling now at 32 and a half at the low and 62 and a half at the high. So now I'm gonna come in and do my proper calibration here on the latch assembly. So I'll loosen the set screw. And I'm, I know that I'm pulling high by a couple pounds. So that means I need to tighten this screw because that will raise this lever right here and give me a little less engagement on the brake lever. So I'm just going to turn this clockwise a little bit. Now usually at this phase, I'm still testing my tension at the high setting at 60 pounds because most people aren't stringing down at 30 pounds, so I'd rather get it spot on at 60 and be just slightly off at 30, then be spot on at 30 and just be a little bit off at 60, which is, you know, uh, usually a more desirable range, and at least if you're stringing tennis rackets. So I'm pretty close here. Just make one slight adjustment. Sometimes you really don't need to turn these screws very much at all. All right. And I think that'll do it. Um, I was only a little bit off, so I didn't need to move that screw very much. But that is the basic calibration procedure if your tensioner is not pulling linearly. So um, that's very important that... Uh, you know how to do that if you if you see that you're pulling at different uh, ranges of tension at different settings. Um, so that'll that's a really good trick to know um, how to do there. Um, before we finish up, there's a couple more things I want to mention. Sometimes it may be necessary to do other adjustments on your tensioner, such as um, you may need you may need to actually move the latch assembly. So I'll show you how to do that. This isn't always necessary, but rarely I see tensioners where I have to actually make an adjustment to this latch block. And you see, I can loosen it up with these two screws. That one's tight. And you can see now this rotates up and down. So if I really need to, if I'm running out of room here, I can, I can move this down so that I'm engaging more. If it's down way too much and I'm all the way jammed up at the top and you don't want to tighten this screw in all the way, you can also just rotate that up to change the engagement on that brake lever. So that's uh, something that can also come in handy. One more area on the spring tensioner where you may occasionally need to make an adjustment is with this black oval cam right here and uh, using this screw. Um, what this does is 
you can see that I'm changing by moving, by rotating this piece around, I'm changing the engagement of this bar on the tension spring down here. So I'm adjusting the initial load that's on the tension spring. So for instance, if I have my tensioner set to 60 pounds and I'm pulling at 40 pounds, I am going to, let's say this was the initial position of this cam and I'm pulling low, I want to rotate it down so I can decrease the pressure initially on the spring so that what that does is when I'm actually pulling the string it's going to take more time for this arm to rotate up and release the brake lever. So I'm decreasing the initial load on that spring and I'm, that's going to result in a higher tension that's being applied to the string. Now if the opposite was true, if I'm uh, trying to string at 60 pounds and I'm pulling at 80, then I will rotate this cam up and increase the initial load on the spring so that it takes less time for the tensioner to rotate up here and release the brake lever. Um, so that doesn't, I, I rarely see cases where, where that's necessary, um, but this piece does have an effect on the tension. So that is also something to keep in mind uh, when you're going through the calibration. You shouldn't really ever need to mess with this, but um, it does happen occasionally. Um, also, there's a couple things to keep an eye on. Are there's, you see there's a couple screws right here behind this bar. You want to make sure those are nice and flush uh, with the casing of the spring tensioner because if those are jutting out and kind of preventing this piece right here from moving, that will also have an effect on the tension. So you want to make sure that this has a free path uh, and that nothing is getting in that way. Um, so uh, that is all that I wanted to cover today for the spring tensioner uh, calibration. Um, so I hope you enjoyed the video. Leave a like if you did. Um, subscribe for more Gamma Sports content, content and uh, let us know in the comments um, if there's any machine maintenance videos or, or anything of that nature that you'd like to see. Um, maybe you're having an issue with your machine and want some help, so I want a video about it. So uh, let us know in the comments. Yeah.